Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me start introducing myself. I am Aladdin Hamadi, an employee at the University of Qasdi Merbah, Wirgla. Uh, exactly in the Vicerectorate of External Relations and Cooperation. So today we will talk about the Erasmus Plus program and present the experiences of some students and teachers who uh, have benefited from the Erasmus Plus program from the University of uh, Wergla and another countries. Before starting, I want to define uh, what Erasmus Plus program means. So, Erasmus Plus is a program of cooperation and mobility in the field uh, of higher education that aims uh, uh, to improve the quality of European higher education and promote a dialogue and understanding between people, culture, through cooperation with other countries. In addition, in uh, contribution uh, contributes to the development of human resources and the ability of uh, international uh, international higher education and to improve dialogue and understanding between peoples and cultures high cooperation with other countries. In addition, uh, it contributes to the development of human resources and the ability of uh, international cooperation from high education. Uh, institutions in another countries uh, of the world by increasing mobility between the European Union and these countries. The objectives of this program are Erasmus Plus is cooperation and mobility program in higher education for enhancing quality in European higher education, the promotion of uh, the European Union as center of excellence in education worldwide promoting intercultural understanding through cooperation with third uh, world countries as well as the, for the development of third world countries in the fight high education. So, today I have a group of guests from Europe, Middle East and Algeria. So, the first one we have guests from Czech Republic. We are honored to be a lecturer of the Czech language at the University of Masaryk University, Martina Semakova. So, another we have, uh, we move to another uh, second guest, Dr. Tagrid Abed, Professor of Language, English Language at Birzit uh, University in the state of Palestinian. The third guest is Aisha Zorbi, is now a PhD student and she is benefited from the Erasmus Plus program in uh, 2016 from University of Wergla. The fourth guest is Bashir Wazan. He is benefited from the program in uh, 2017 from University Wargla 2. The fifth guest is Iman Sherbi, benefited, benefited from the a scholarship from of uh, Qasdi Merbah University to Hungary. We have two. Uh, we have uh, two other PhD students, Mohammed Auf and Fatima Zohra Nwasriya, who will benefit from the program in this university. Session. So, we have pleasure to receive our questions and in the last of this live broadcast we will answer your questions in the Facebook page of this Directorate of External Relations of our guests. So, let's start with our guest Martina. Martina, hi. Martina. I don't know. Yeah, I can't hear you. you hear me, Martina? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? You hear me, Martina? Ahlan, ahlan, ahlan. So, Martina. Uh, Martina, when I say to sales from Czech Republic, and tell us her, tell me, tell us and uh, her experience in the Erasmus program, who was on visit to University of Wargla last March. So. You can uh, introduce yourself, Martina, and tell us what about program Erasmus Plus in the Wargla. Okay, um, so hello, my name is Martina Czermakova. Uh, I'm a from Czech Republic, and I work for Masaryk University two years. Mm -hmm. And I'm a lecturer of Czech language for foreigners, and also I teach Portuguese, because uh, I study Portuguese at the university, and I lived in Brazil for seven years. I visited uh, Oregla in February this year. Just uh, it was like five days before lockdown, so so it was uh, 
my last trip uh, and I hope that we will can travel like uh, soon and uh, that this situation will be over and that it will be not necessary to to meet the others just online. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay, maybe uh, uh, I can start uh, with the first question about uh, why I decided to uh, register yes. in the yeah. program Erasmus Plus. Yeah. Okay, so um, I signed up uh, for the program for professional, professional and personal reasons. And of course, it depends if I sign up for the teaching or training program placement. Because uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can sign up for teaching program and it must be to be related uh, to my language skills. And as I'm teacher of the Czech language, so I have to choose the department or university where the Czech language uh, is taught. So uh, for this reason, I went to uh, Humboldt University in Berlin when I was teaching uh, Czech language. And uh, uh, the motivation was uh, to exchange learning strategies and uh, ideas of best practice and develop links with teachers from the university, but also to increase increase motivation and mm -hmm. satisfaction of the students of the Czech language, but also my motivation and uh, satisfaction in daily work. So uh, that's uh, the main reasons when I choose the, the teaching program of Erasmus+. Plus. But I can choose as well training program and the motivation for me is uh, the need to prove that I have the confidence to travel alone and take care of me and uh, to improve my self-confidence. And of course, I have to join that I want to improve my language competencies. I want to explore the aspects of intercultural communication. Uh, new, new, new people, not just from academic environment, but from the other, um, uh, 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 other people to travel and make new friendship, taste new food and so on. But what is uh, uh, in common for teaching and training program is observe and evaluate classroom management strategies and transferability into language lessons of other universities to Masaryk University, but also vice versa. What I can bring to Orgla or to Berlin regarding to my professional experience with the teaching lessons. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote my, uh, my application for, for uh, university Orgla, I want to show, shadow, sorry, shadow colleagues at the faculty of arts and languages. So it was uh, my my goal not to teach, but uh, to training and to shadow my colleagues, uh, the department of uh, English. Uh, I planned to visit French and Arabic, but I just went to the uh, English department section. Okay, so yeah. I don't know if I continue with another yes, question. Yes, 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 you can. Okay, so uh, you you sent me the second picture, uh, section, uh, second question. It was um, uh, particularly in Oregla. Yeah. Uh, so I believe that Erasmus program it's uh, it was excellent opportunity to meet people from Algeria, to spend some quality time with them and learn about their customs and attitudes. And I mediated the best impressions of Algeria back to my home country. Uh, I always speak very well about uh, Orgla town people, food and so on. And for me it was uh, really attractive and unique opportunity to spend time uh, in the academic environment uh, of a such interesting country. So my plan was uh, to do the job shadowing, uh, to do introduction tour around university, and to have some presentation about my language center and about the Masaryk University in Brno. So uh, I all, uh, it was completed. So I had with uh, Aladin uh, you know, this introduction to around university. Uh, I could uh, 
uh, do this job shadowing, job shadowing, especially uh, with the teachers of uh, English department. Mm -hmm. I went to some lessons uh, of written expressions, literature session, and I had meetings with masters and PhD students of linguistic, literature and translation. And I also met teachers from English department and from intensive language teaching center. And uh, I cannot forget the teachers and students from American corner. Yes. And uh, how was the impression when I came to the university? So, uh, of course, everyone creates in head some certain idea what the environment will look like. And I was really surprised surprised how the university big is. I realized that there is 1,300 students in the Department of English and 30 teachers. So uh, I was really surprised with this and uh, the quality of the teaching is very high, I think. Uh, but the, the groups of studying are a really group because a uh, really, <clears throat> sorry, uh, big. Uh, I went to the classroom when we were 50 students and I can say when I have 20 students I'm complaining ah, 20 students no Jesus I don't want and I can see that with 50 uh, students it's possible and I have to repeat that the quality of teaching uh, was very high so I think that the teachers are, are very uh, com um, competitive and the students are motivated and most of them co uh, are cooperating uh, well in the lesson. Uh, I saw, think a little bit maybe the technical equipment uh, for me it was a little bit uh, not uh, how to say insufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm used to we are like how to so say spoiled now because mm -hmm. we are using a lot of YouTube videos and uh, I don't know application and all this stuff. So I went back a little bit like five years ago, working with the papers, not, not uh, all uh, lessons. Uh, I went to a lesson of uh, expressions and uh, the students had really good presentations uh, with PowerPoint and uh, data show. And for me, it was really a great experience. And also uh, just maybe for finishing um, it's not just, of course, uh, the, the lessons, but also all this meeting with uh, the people that I can meet, like Aladdin, like um, uh, Imane, that she helped me to buy stuff uh, in, uh, uh, how it's called, in the market. Uh, thank you very much again. <laughs> and, uh, I, I met uh, the dear teacher, Haman Halini. And uh, uh, yes, uh, head of the English department, Samira. So uh, because of them, because of them, my experience in Orgla, it was uh, very uh, warm and I really like it. And I have to repeat that uh, all my impressions are so nice. And I have to say thank you again for this experience. And I hope that I can, can go back so inshallah. one day. Yeah, inshallah. So I have another question. I have another question, please, uh, Martina. What's the impact of the program on uh, your academic, scientific, and personal life as well? Uh, yes, of course, there, there are a lot. Uh, I think that I already mentioned some, uh, some of them. So I think the impact, impact uh, for um, uh, my part and Oracle University is to strength the international and uh, intercultural competencies to open your mind and to enhance intercultural awareness and to develop capabilities in international focusing on language programs and of course uh, not the last to improve language competencies so uh, i think that's this thing language competencies uh, cap uh, develop capabilities couple it be in international focusing on language programs and uh, not the last intercultural competencies yes 
So thank you, Martina, for your uh, amazing about your experience here in uh, University of Wargla. So now uh, we're moving to our second doctoral guest, Tagrid Abed, to, to tell us her experience on the Erasmus Plus journey. So Tagrid, hi. Okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. Yes, you can do. Yes, you can. So Tagrid, you can introduce hi. yourself. Hello. And can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, you can start. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, sometimes I, uh, I'm sorry, I have to turn the camera off because uh, I don't need any inter interruption. Okay, in sound uh, interruption. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, uh, Dr. Sagrid Abed uh, from Palestine. Um, a teacher of English. Um, Actually, I like uh, what Martina has uh, just uh, introduced herself and she talked about the languages. Uh, my PhD is in uh, methodology, mm -hmm. teaching English as a foreign language. And I'm also the director. Maybe the voice is gone. Tagrid, you heard me? I think she will be here in a few minutes. I think. Yes. The internet is uh, weak in Palestine. Weak a bit? Yeah. So, read. So, we can move uh, to the third guest, maybe. Tagrid, you are here? You heard me, Tagrid? I have to turn the camera off, okay? Yeah, okay, okay, no problem. You can do that. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm the director of the Palestine and Arabic Studies program, uh, which is called PASS program for the international students who come to Beer State University and study Arabic. Um, as the foreign students or um, students of non speakers of Arabic, okay? Yeah. This is uh, all about me. Actually, ha uh, I had the opportunity um, to participate in Erasmus a program and i um, so thankful for my colleague, uh, Mr. Ala, uh, for his warm invitation, actually, uh, and uh, giving me the chance to participate now in this webinar and to talk about my Erasmus experience. Okay, thank you, Ala. You're okay, welcome. Okay. Uh, now, actually, um, I participated in uh, the University of Santiago de Compostela in Spain last year, in November last year, and it was an amazing experience, actually, because we met many people, uh, we, we shared experiences, we talked uh, about our universities, our programs, and we visited uh, many campuses. Actually, we were um, warmly welcomed by the rector of the university who told us about the process of Erasmus and the process uh, application. Okay, uh, we also visited many universities uh, upon our options or choices. Uh, we were asked, for example, every one of us was asked uh, what major or uh, what college or university or campus uh, we are interested in visiting. For example, I'm interested in languages, so I visited uh, the campus or uh, the University of Education, Methodology, Curriculum and Instruction, where I met my colleagues there and we talked about uh, what kind of methodology, teaching practices and so on. Uh, it was an uh, uh, amazing experience also because we visited uh, and uh, I think that uh, Mr. Ala uh, remembers very well when we were taken to the media center. Yeah. Uh, they, showed us, they showed us how um, the people there uh, prepare rooms and video lessons for the teachers to enable the teachers to give live lessons on the spot for their um, students. Okay, so video lessons they were uh, a lot they were live. And we also um, took pictures in that room, and we were very, um, um, very happy. Okay. Mm. And also, uh, we got to learn the uh, the strategies they follow for the Erasmus application, the quality of cooperation, arrangement, 
uh, project design, implementation, and the visibility and dissemination. Okay, we also, I think that you do that as well, and we do that at the university also, because there are different procedures for um, the application. Uh, I think that uh, also they took us to uh, several types of um, campuses or universities because many of the colleagues um, uh, from the 40 international um, universities who participated were interested in different topics, subject majors. Uh, they took us to um, uh, wood factories where they produce wood. They, um, they uh, make uh, things uh, from wood and so on. Uh, actually, many uh, of the colleagues were interested in uh, vocational issues, okay, or subjects, and that was a great experience for them as well. Mm. Uh, the second thing I'd like to tell you about is um, Birzeit University. And uh, you're all invited to visit Birzeit University in Palestine, and we will be very happy. When you visit uh, Palestine. Yes. Uh, <laughs> my invitation is directed uh, also to um, um, Martina, my sister Martina, uh, because uh, she introduced her, uh, herself as uh, a teacher of languages and also because the University and PATH program teaches Arabic for non speakers. So you are invited to come and study Arabic uh, at the University. Thank you. <laughs> The Zed University was built in uh, 1924 as a uh, small um, school for girls from the uh, different uh, nearby villages. And it was developed uh, gradually to a college and then university. And now it is the most famous university in Palestine. Uh, it has many uh, academic subjects, um, majors, uh, it uh, offers BA degrees and master's degrees in a variety of subjects. And we have only one PhD program, which is in uh, sociology. And uh, this year, uh, the students were supposed to be uh, to graduate in June, last June. But unfortunately, there was no um, uh, graduation ceremony because of the um, uh, situation, the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Okay. Yes. And uh, my third uh, speech or presentation will be very brief about. Um, uh, the past program. Uh, why I went or accepted the invitation to Erasmus program also in order to um, familiarize my uh, colleagues or the people who I uh, get to know them uh, about the past program. The past program is Palestine and Arabic studies program that teaches Arabic. It started, it was launched in 19, um, uh, 94 actually as uh, offering Arabic lessons for non-speakers of Arabic, or for the uh, um, Palestinians, of, or students or people from Palestinian origin as well, okay? Because they usually come to Palestine during the summer holidays and they do not have any idea about Arabic. This is a kind of um, encouragement. Uh, it was also developed gradually. And now we offer many courses in um, uh, not only in Arabic, but uh, social studies, the Palestinian question, the, uh, the Arab uh, thought, and so on. So, um, um, we have three semesters a year, uh, the, the fall semester, the spring semester, and the uh, uh, summer semester. So, we teach Arabic and we teach, so uh, sometimes come on, uh, some students um, ask for different types of courses, uh, we can offer, for example, uh, about the family, the Arab family or the Palestinian family. Students are, international students are interested to come to Palestine to share experiences, to get to know the people, not only to learn Arabic, to uh, socialize with the people, to visit people, to, to eat, to know what to eat, what to drink, how to behave, what to uh, dress, what's right, what's wrong. They also visit um, uh, people in their homes. They cook with them. They get to know the Palestinian cuisine. Uh, they feel very happy. Uh, they go to historic places, um, cultural places. And as Martina said, also, we uh, do not have only student mobility in, um, 
and Erasmus. Also, we have capacity building, not only for students. We have incoming students and outgoing students. We have teachers uh, teaching weeks, for example, from uh, one week to 60 days and so on. And students from maybe one semester to one whole year and so on. Uh, also, we have um, a training session. Actually, um, last June, we were supposed in uh, Birzit, at Birzit University to hold a, um, uh, the training week, the staff training week. But unfortunately, it was canceled because of the uh, pandemic or COVID-19. Mm. Uh, now, at Birzit University, if you'd like to get more information, uh, I gave the link to Mr. Ra'ala. You can visit www.birzit.com. Edu and the external relations office. You can find everything, all the information about Erasmus, the projects. Nowadays, we have four projects, and there are different types. Uh, actually, there are 20 uh, European countries, 21 European countries uh, Sweden, France, Greece, Spain, blah blah blah. Okay, uh, more than 56 universities. And I hope from now that we can develop um, more relationships here together with the Arab world, starting from this webinar, starting from you guys here, and to, to visit each other, to cooperate together, to develop educational um, relationships together, together in order to, to um, widen our horizon, in order to get to know more information, to share experiences, and so on. Um, I don't know if you want to know more. Uh, yes, yes, you can. Uh, yeah, you can more. Okay, carry on. Uh, I cannot see any questions. Okay, can you ask any questions? Okay, any qu I, questions. Uh, I, I uh, waiting questions in the page of Facebook. Maybe I don't know any questions here. But okay, you carry on. Uh, After that, we can we can we do we do questions. Do you have any questions, guys or ladies? Uh, I don't. I can't see any questions. Actually, I'm sorry. Okay, Aisha or Bashir. Had that have this any asylum? Yes. Actually, uh, before asking question, I really want to thank you for uh, your presentation. Uh, as uh, I mentioned to you before, Palestine always has a spot in my heart. You provide amazing explanation to the Erasmus Plus program that you are having in your university with a, a full explanation and you encourage people to participate Thank with you. the Erasmus program uh, at your university. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for all the explanation currently. I don't have a question, but uh, looking forward to receive more uh, from the Facebook page yes so if you have any question maybe later we can ask questions thank you so much you're welcome anytime i'm very happy to be with you now and thank you so much all of you and maybe my colleague mr ala thank you for uh, you your invitation i'm happy and also i look forward to cooperating together with all of you yes, yes. So hopefully you will be in touch yes you are welcome uh, dr Tawid. So uh, I will I will uh, to come back for you, Doctor Tagrid. So now now we move uh, to the third guest, Aisha Zorbi, who is now in France. As well said, it is a beneficiary of the Erasmus Plus program in 2016. So Aisha, tell me, play, uh, okay, you can uh, introduce yourself and tell us about your experience in the Erasmus program. Thanks so much, Aladdin. And uh, hello everyone, I'm happy to see you and hear you all. As uh, I did mention, I'm a PhD student at Charles University, Prague. Currently I am in uh, France, Tours. Uh, I'm having a collaboration at the Prime Lab. It is basically a research lab related to communication and media studies, which is my major. I was lucky enough to participate in Erasmus Plus program at uh, Charles University, Brno, thanks to Dr. Murat Qureshi. He did an amazing job, uh, offered me this opportunity, and always 
doing his best to improve the image of uh, Qazim Rabah University, my hometown university, which I really uh, love, because uh, uh, Qazim Rabah University is one of the best university universities in Algeria and North Africa in general. So, special thanks to him, Dr. Murad Qureshi. And uh, moving to your question, Ala uh, Eddin, regarding my experience of Erasmus Plus program, it was a really uh, amazing one. Because, please, uh, uh, Aisha, please, Aisha. sorry, sorry, Aisha, I can yes. see you. You can uh, lie your camera. Sorry? Your camera is not uh, work. Okay, I will try again. Hello? Can you hear me? It's working. It's working? It's working? Yeah, it's okay. Working. Maybe it's working. for me, for me it's not here. working. Okay, yeah, yeah. carry on. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what I was saying that uh, I was lucky enough to participate in the Erasmus uh, Plus program thanks to uh, Prof. Murat Qureshi. And uh, uh, I was quite young when I participated, 21, 22 years old. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, it was uh, four years ago, but yeah. So, yeah, what I want, want to say is like uh, visiting Brno for the very first time as an Algerian student from the south of Algeria, from Wirgla, which, which was a real uh, a challenge for me. I'm glad that, that my parents support me. I went there with my father. He really liked Brno. And we visit together uh, Mazarik University, which I will always have uh, a s spot in my heart for Mazarik University. Because uh, through this university and through the Erasmus Plus program, I had the chance to meet new people from Palestine, from uh, Czech people originally. They were really nice and kind uh, from America. My supervisor, actually, because when I went there, I, I was working on my master. So uh, the supervision, the supervisor, sorry, of my uh, master thesis was American. So Masaryk University, his name is Henry Lizer. Mm -hmm. So Masaryk University provided me the opportunity to get uh, a high level education from different uh, 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 teachers around the world. And uh, I still do remember that in 2016, the amount of uh, international student that visit Brno was big from all around the world from from like South Korea from China from Japan from US from through uh, different uh, sorry from different countries within Europe so it it gives me the access to all those people to all those cultures to learn more about myself and about others I got also uh, like my master. I worked uh, on it there, so it was really nice experience. I really liked Brno, and uh, yeah, I encourage all students to learn more about the program and to know how to apply it and uh, learn the language. I think now. Uh, to have uh, English as a language is essential to communicate with other people from different uh, countries. I had the chance in the uh, like the first week in Brno to learn some Czech words, so I can say ahoy and some greeting, which I really love and enjoy the language still nowadays because now I am a PhD student uh, in Prague. What else? You can ask me other questions. If yes, you want. Uh, Aisha, please tell me what is the impact of uh, the program on your academic, scientific, and personal life as well, like Martina. The impact, I'm living it uh, now and today because it gave me the opportunity to, to know scholars from uh, top and high level. Mm -hmm. Coming from like Wirkla University, Qazim Rabah University. Erasmus Plus and Masaryk University with the, the exchange program, it provides me the uh, possibility to know uh, different uh, researchers and uh, scholars through the Europe and outside Europe. So I applied for, uh, applica for different applications in order to, once I got my master's degree, mm -hmm. I moved to uh, 
my PhD degree, which I'm doing right now, it's giving me this opportunity, and this is a huge impact. I was able to move directly from being a master's student to being a PhD student and getting um, better experience. So yes, I am now in Arcturus University under a Belgium supervisor. His name is uh, Nicole Carpentier, and he's one of the figure of uh, our uh, speciality, Communication and Media Studies, and actually he is the president of MCR, which is the International Association for Communication and Media Research. So uh, this is the impact. This is the impact of Erasmus Plus. Yeah. This is the impact of Qasim al University, the impact of Prof. Murad Qureshi. He is doing an amazing job to all the team. He is really supporting Qasim al University to go further. Thanks. A lot to also Masaryk University. There, I have learned many things, many, many things. I've met amazing people, people which I am still, uh, till nowadays, I'm having a connection with them. And uh, also uh, from Palestine, sorry, from Palestine also, which I wanted to mention. Uh, oh. They are really amazing. And till nowadays, I have a connection with them. So, yes. We're happy. Yeah, me too. I'm so happy mm -hmm. and glad for this opportunity. And uh, the sky is limit. Is the limit or even above the sky? I would encourage all the students to study very well. Maybe we are now talking and discussing happily about uh, uh, the things that we love and that we enjoy about the experience. But uh, through the line, there is a lot of work, a lot of dedication a lot of uh, uh, sleepless nights because you have obligations to do, you have a study to do. So, yeah, it's serious. So, the core to success as a student is to study very well, to study smartly, ask a question, helping others, because I believe that in order to uh, improve our level and improve our knowledge, is to share it with people, help others, and be productive. Thank you so much. So thank, okay. thank you very much, uh, Ms. Aisha. So uh, I come back for you, inshallah. Now we're thank moving. Thank you, Aisha. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm just okay. uh, happy to hear, hear it. And I want to invite Aisha. I don't know if you are going to Prague, maybe one day. Uh, you are. I will be very happy if you can visit me at Masaryk University in Brno, I will be happy to meet you personally, so please stay in touch. Sure, yeah. I would be glad to meet you in Brno when I visit it, and also you are welcome to visit me in uh, Prague. I'm now just in France because I have this uh, a collaboration in order to produce an uh, academic article, in order okay. to graduate as a PhD student, so wish me luck. Okay, okay, I will, oh, I will, yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Aisha. So uh, now we are moving to fourth uh, doctoral guest, Bashir with them to tell us her experience in the Erasmus Plus program. So how are you with them, Bashir? I'm very good. How are you, Mr. Alan? Yes, you are okay. Thank you. So you can you, tell, you can tell us about your experience in Mother University? Yeah, sure. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Martin Dubridan. Yes, and, okay. Uh, uh, first of all, as uh, Aisha said, I would like to thank uh, all the staff who uh, give me the chance or the opportunity to get the Erasmus opportunity and uh, study in uh, Masaryk University in Bernou, Czech Republic country. So uh, my story start, my story with Erasmus Plus started on September 2016 when I applied for a doctoral program to get a chance uh, in order to study uh, in uh, Masaryk University. Uh, the real or the start of the story started on November 28 when I got that email which said that you have been selected to study in uh, Masaryk University. Uh, the administrative staff took about three to four months till I got my visa in order to uh, get to travel to Czech Republic in February 2000, 2017. 
uh, which I got the program of autumn of autumn 2017. There are there are two programs, autumn and spring. Uh, sorry, I got the program of spring 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined Berno on, or I joined Masaryk University within um, within Masaryk within Erasmus Plus program on February 2017, uh, which I found there a lot of very high education quality with a lot of uh, high quality equipment and very competent teachers. Called, uh, uh, moreover, uh, very understandable administrative staff. Uh, in addition to get the chance to meet and. Uh, have the chance to meet a lot of people from all over the world, as Aisha mentioned, in that year, 2016 and 2017. I think there were more than eight or uh, eight or nine hundred students, or I mean, foreign students studying in Berno from all over the world, from all over the world, from China, India, Pakistan, Nigeria, uh, Palestine. Egypt, Turkey, uh, Germany, France, UK, uh, Dominican Republic, Brazil, all over the world. So there were a central point to meet all of that people and to get a chance to have a huge uh, international network with them. In the, academic, in the academic background, I get a chance to work with my supervisor there, which is called Michel Yarasek. Yasek, which he is uh, a doctor in the. Uh, I, I forgot to to say that I was studying in the Faculty of Economics and Administration near to Vina Vinarska. I was uh, working there with my supervisor uh, Michel Yarasek. Uh, I had the chance to work with him in partner partnership to participate in in conference in Zaichi Zaichi village. I think Martina knew it. Do you know uh, Zaichi Martina? Yeah, 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 I know. It's a really nice village with a lot of uh, wine yards and good wine. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have I had the chance to participate in conference organized there by the uh, Faculty of Economics and Administration, which was very beneficial to my uh, academic career and background and helped helped me a lot in preparing my PhD on. Uh, on economic sciences. Uh, moreover, I on my free time when I was in the faculty, I visited the library, which had a huge number of books and uh, references, which which can, which you can use to get a uh, lot of lot of uh, information. Can help you to do your research and uh, and scientific papers. Uh, in the other hand. Uh, Living in Czech Republic or in Berlin give you, <coughs> sorry, give you the chance to visit all over the Europe. And uh, here I want to mention that, that in uh, Mosaic University, you, uh, there, uh, there is something, something called uh, ISIC or ISC, which is International Student Club. I think I should know it. This club help you. Yeah, this club help you to give you the uh, from your first day in Masaryk University till your last day in Berno. They will provide uh, for you a guide person who can uh, give you a lot of information about the city, give you uh, uh, guide you in everything you want and you don't want in in uh, in Berno. Also, this club organized events week weekly events and they, they provide a lot of events to visit a lot of uh, European countries in weekends and in holidays. So in general, this was my experience and I was there in Berno uh, for five or six months, about six months in 2017. And I can say it, it was a very, very, very uh, forgettable experience to me. So please, uh, please, I have a question, please, Mr. Bashir. You stayed yeah, there yeah. in uh, University of Mazare five months. Was it enough for you? Uh, honestly, it wasn't enough because, uh, in general, it was in the beginning. It was uh, ten months. Then mm -hmm. they cut it to five months. 
and there were some uh, very very small problem with I was studying, not preparing my PhD. Yeah, I, yeah in, when you get a chance to uh, get an Erasmus Plus scholarship in Mosaic, you will study with master and uh, bachelor students, even you are in doctorate uh, circle. So this was my little little, uh, little issue, and it was uh, it wasn't that uh, very big issue to me. So, so thank you, Mr. Bashir, for your tell us about your experience. Now we're moving to our guest, Iman Sherbi, benefited from a particular scholarship from the Kazdimerberg University to Hungary. So Iman, hi. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay, Iman. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Introduce yourself you and... Okay. Sorry. No more. Okay, introduce yourself and. Yes, my name is Serb Iman. Uh, freshly graduated from uh, Hungarian University. Now, uh, currently, I am teaching at the uh, University of Kazdimerbach as an assistant teacher and also a teacher of English language in a private school. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say first. Uh, I am not uh, an Erasmus uh, Plus program holder, but I know, uh, like, I have small background uh, about the Erasmus program. Since I had the scholarship uh, to, to carry on or to pursue my uh, studies or master's studies in Hungarian University yes. uh, called Saged University. So I had the chance to meet Erasmus students there. So as Mr. Uh, Ala already uh, asked me, like, what do you see or how do you uh, met Erasmus students in uh, in Hungary? Uh, first of all, when we had like uh, exchange programs there, I'm, I've had, I have met with Erasmus students there uh, in an exchange uh, program, cultural program and uh, activities. There was special uh, club for them, assisting them where uh, when they study. They have special activities and guide mentors there. I really like the idea how Erasmus students um, from different countries met together as if they known each other from re really very, very long time. They were uh, cooperating together, learning from each other, communicating together. So it was really a uh, really good chance to me to join them as a scholarship holder, as an international student as well. So it was really good for me to, to spend the quality time with them in some activities and cultural activities. And I would like to highlight uh, from this discussion, like we were discussing uh, the uh, benefits from uh, Erasmus Plus program. So scholarships, like in general, and Erasmus Plus in special, they help students not only to exchange universities and to go study abroad, but also they have they help to exchange cultural I mean uh, skills and social skills. So it's really good for them to to let's say uh, have like international network. So they will have to to know people from different countries and different cultures. Uh, they will uh, learn from each other, like I have uh, I have done when I was there. So I still have friends from many people from many places in this world. I'm still in contact with them. So it's really good for us uh, as students to go abroad in these exchange programs and mainly Erasmus Plus program. So it's really uh, beneficial for us to go because we learn more than we just go to study in, uh, in a university uh, abroad. So I think this is my question. If you have anything yes, okay, to ask Karen, about studying about... in Hungary, you are welcome. Yeah, if uh, I want to ask you about your experience uh, about in scholarship, then uh, you study there, uh, studied there in two years in the master. Can you tell us okay. about your study there? What uh, what are you doing exactly? Was the uh, model like here in Algeria or not? Okay. Okay. So first of all, for me, for for a girl, doesn't uh, didn't go for I mean abroad before. First time going abroad directly to Hungary to study master degree for two years. It was a bit challenging, as the, uh, as the, uh, uh, sorry, Fatima or yeah, Aisha, as Aisha said, is what it was challenging for me. But uh, I was in a way preparing myself before I go, 
So I prepared myself that I have to go, I have to make it in order to, to change a bit my life because it was really a life-changing opportunity for me. I had to take it. So uh, it was really good opportunity for me to study abroad, uh, specifically in Hungary. Hungary is uh, it's a country in uh, East Europe. It is a, it's not that big country, it is small. Its capital is Budapest. I was studying in a small uh, city called Sagat. It was really good for me, a very peaceful, calm, small city. And university uh, staff and administration, they were so uh, helping and they were so friendly for us international students, helping us, guiding us throughout the two years of our studying. Also, we, don't, we cannot really forget the help of our university team for exchanging uh, this kind of, uh, let's say, program for scholarship for students. They were helping us. Uh, like tracking our progress abroad, mm -hmm. so they were not, uh, they didn't just send us abroad and they didn't uh, check <laughs> or track what they were, what we were doing. So they were really uh, funding us and also tracking our progress abroad. So I would uh, thank, of course, our members and administrations of our uh, university, Kazimir Bach University, Wargla. I would like to thank them for their opportunity for us to give me uh, this golden chance, I would say, to go abroad and have my master's degree. So, so it was really a good experience for me. So I hope you will get another scholarship in the Erasmus program, you may. I hope that. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. So now we're moving to our guest, Mohamed Aouf, who will benefit from this program in the coming months. We'll go Spain specifically on uh, to the University of Santiago de Compostela. So, Mohamed, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you, everyone? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, what I I have a question about you. Uh, what question uh, you can uh, ask, uh, ask the a student who have pre previously uh, partic uh, participated in the Erasmus Plus program? So you can ask uh, Aisha or uh, Bashir Wedden or the teacher of uh, Martina or Tagarid about uh, exp her, her experiences about in Erasmus Plus. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, having us in Sarala and uh, for the University of Parla, uh, which uh, provide us this experience. I hope uh, the, the borders uh, will open for uh, in February, so, so I can get this uh, experience of Erasmus Plus uh, to Spain. Uh, I'm currently studying uh, in PhD uh, in chemical engineering. Uh, my program is to to go to Spain with a supervisor there to uh, accomplish uh, research in. Uh, new research, so we can publish uh, an article, scientific article. Uh, my question, I have uh, two questions. Yeah. Uh, the first one is, uh, what is the most challenging thing that they, uh, they experience there? Uh, so we know that uh, for a student who has never go abroad, uh, uh, exactly to the European country, uh, what are the most challenging thing that are the problems maybe I can face. This is the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, for the second one, okay. how, how they manage the, the difference in, so they go, uh, I, I think uh, this question maybe is concerning Aisha, uh, how they manage the, the, the difference in the background which we have in our university and uh, their, 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 their in this university, we know that there is a, there is a difference. So, we, well, how they manage to, to get to their level in the I, I mean in level of education? Okay, no. this is my maybe uh, uh, so sorry, Aisha. Maybe the or first the fir maybe yeah. the first question for uh, Bashir. I know he's uh, he can answer you for about the first question and the second question for Aisha. Okay. Okay. So, uh, to be clear, this, this, <laughs> the question was about what are the... Uh, can you repeat the question, please? What are the most challenging problems or uh, things you, you face? It? Uh, I, uh, for example, uh, uh, the education in education or uh, in 
how to manage your, uh, I mean, salary or this course. Uh, okay. So uh, about the challenging things, you will not, you won't find a lot of problems, especially, especially in uh, the uh, on financial things, because you will get a, a monthly scholarship, which can provide all uh, your necessary with it. Uh, it will be very, very, very enough. So you don't think on this day. This thing, uh, I think. Uh, uh, the most thing we will change is the language, the language in with the public and the other uh, people. And uh, you will find that uh, that large universities they use uh, uh, English more of, more than our university, and they have very high level on the English language. So you have to work on your English background in order to to. Uh, Develop it, or to move, to develop it more and more, in order to facilitate your mission in uh, your in, in your next uh, university. This is all that important. So the word to you, uh, Miss Aisha. Thank you so much, uh, Bashir, for your notes. They are highly important. Uh, what I want to mention, um, just the small tip when it. To, regarding the financial part, to uh, for you, Mohammed, and also for Fatima. Okay, thank you. Especially for you, because uh, uh, you you have your Erasmus in uh, Spain, which yeah. they are using Euro, mm. and for Czech Republic, we, we are using Czech Corona, and uh, one Euro it's uh, twenty five Corona, something more or less. Okay, so like the cost of living. In uh, Czech Republic, which we were lucky, together with Bashir, it is less yes, than the other exactly. countries in Europe, for example, here in France or Spain. So we need to be aware when it comes to this point, okay? okay the good thing about Spain that, the, for example, the food is not uh, expensive. Okay. Clothes are not expensive. Maybe the rent of the your accommodation yeah. will be a bit higher. Yes. So you need to focus when it comes to this point with your money management, okay? Thank you. Hope it will work. When regarding your first question, when you said uh, like what was the most challenging thing for me when I when I went abroad? Yeah. Actually, was the language. When I did my uh, uh, my bachelor, I did it in Arabic. Everything in Arabic, and even the foreign language, which which we had. Once in a week, it was French. Yes. So mm. to go to Brno and start the the master degree in English, it was a real challenge for me because my major is not English. I'm studying communication and media studies, so like I had to work on everything. And till nowadays, I'm working on the language because it's a, a learning process. It doesn't came like just from day to night, okay? The good thing about the, there, the scholars, the atmosphere help you to improve. They will never sabotage you or something like that. No, everyone will be supportive, hopefully. I pray for you when it comes to this point, okay? Thank you. So, yeah, the language is so important and also the content. Like, you really need to study very well and improve your competence. In my opinion, I have very important to study as a master student and working on the, my thesis. I was lucky enough that I have American supervisor. He helped me with the language, okay? And he always, his advice was be concrete, short and sweet. So he wasn't focusing. He has the perfect uh, heavy American accent. But as a, a girl coming from Algeria with my Algerian accent, he was so welcoming. He, he just said, be concrete, which means to be direct and provide accurate information and be uh, confident with your information, okay? This is the first thing. Second thing, what else? Uh, the, the gap that we have. Yeah, the gap, yeah. For when I used to, uh, to be a student at... Uh, Qasim al University, which I thank enormously, all the teachers who teach me. I have learned a lot of lessons. 
whether it's good or bad, but they are lessons. Those lessons help me a lot to improve as a person, as an individual. But when I went to Brno and having American supervisor, he was like confused why this is, there is a really huge gap, you know? But the role is uh, depend on us as individual to fill that gap by studying, doing, asking questions, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed of, okay, I'm not good enough, because this question will pop up, uh, uh, how can I express it, uh, more often, okay, through your uh, educational uh, progress. The solution is never quit, always believe in yourself, since you are in this level, you are about to go abroad, hopefully everything will open, the airports will open again and all people will be able to travel as they used to be. So, yes, believe in yourself, work on that, improve your capacities and you will manage everything. I wish you really all the best together with Fatima. I and just want to add it uh, one point. I have one last point, uh, Bashir. Okay. I, want, I want to thank Iman because her English is really amazing and her pronunciation is uh, catchy. Yes. So thank you, Iman. <laughs> thank you so much. So uh, I just want to add a small point to Mohammed. I think you are more luckier than Fatima because you are going to uh, Spain University. You, are, you will work in lab. Yeah, look like this. You are, yes, and we will work in lab, not like Fatima, which is yeah, going we don't to have, study. We don't have courses to study yet. Yeah, so Fatima is going to have some courses to study, and you will work directly in, in lab. So, yeah. uh, my advice to you is, from now, you have to draw your objective. Okay? When, I get, when I will come back from Spain, I will reach this point. So, from now, draw your objective and make your plan with your supervisor. From now, when you when you will go there, say I'm ca I came to Spain in order to do this and this and this and this and this and that. You should, but you must not. You should. You must work hard to achieve them. Like the wisdom says, if you have a dream and you don't achieve it, you don't deserve it. So from now you have to work. Not uh, don't wait till the borders will open and airports uh, will uh, work again. Okay. Thank you. Good Thank luck you. to you and to your Fatima. Uh, Natasha, thank you for your advice. Thanks a lot. So, and thanks to uh, uh, all of you, even uh, Martina and uh, Miss, uh, I forget the name from Palestine. Tagrid, Tagrid. Uh, thank you. Tagrid, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for your information. Uh, you give us uh, co courage. Uh, we courage. hope uh, this, this yeah, courage. Uh, we hope that this uh, borders will open uh, soon, so, so, <laughs> so we can true. go and. Inshallah, hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, Mohammed, is there anything? Mohammed, is there anything else to ask the other lecturers, Tagrid or Martina? Uh, I I think they they have given us enough information. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, can I can I add something more? Yeah. Okay. Or not now? Okay. Now. Okay. You can. Okay, uh, to, uh, I just uh, forgot okay. to tell you uh, that because of the current situation and the coronavirus, uh, nobody is able to come to Palestine nowadays. Um, we're offering online classes, Arabic classes, and the Palestinian question. Many students are enrolled nowadays, and uh, hopefully in January uh, we will be holding our offering the, the first semester, okay, or the second semester, or we call it the spring semester in Palestine, okay. So you're invited to to enroll and to register for the program and to learn Arabic as a foreign language. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tagheri. You're welcome. So now uh, we're moving to our guest, Fatima Zuhra Nwasriya, who will benefit from the, his program in the coming uh, months. We'll go to Czech Republic, exactly to Mazarov University. So Fatima, you are lucky because you have a teacher from the University of which will go and Bashir who is benefiting from the program will go to the same university. So you can ask them about your travel to Mother University in the coming months. So you are 
You are free to ask any uh, what are you what are you want. Thank you. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, and uh, firstly, uh, my name is Masriya Fatima Zahra. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Saudi University on uh, Process Engineering Department, and uh, this is my third year. Uh, so I think, uh, first of all, uh, Yasmin's uh, program, uh, the program, I think, is uh, uh, is uh, like a window uh, which open uh, which open uh, opportunities and uh, expertise for students to explore uh, new experiences and uh, uh, why not to complete and uh, support uh, their research. Uh, this is it. Uh, yes, I have uh, some questions. Um, the first one is uh, to both of you, Aisha and uh, Bashir. Uh, do you think that uh, your studies at Masaryk University have added to your educational qualifications? This is the one. Uh, the second, uh, uh, what is uh, the suitable uh, way uh, for managing the grant during the mobility? And uh, the last one is uh, how much time take the visa procedure? Because uh, the last time, uh, uh, the the only thing that uh, stopped it or uh, is as uh, obstacle in my. Uh, in my way to uh, to Rotary is uh, the visa. This is it. This is uh, the, this is my three questions. Is this question for Aisha or for Aisha? Okay. Go ahead. The first one is uh, for Aisha and uh, Bashir. Yes, uh. the answer correct. Okay. Okay. About uh, the visa. Uh, you will get. We you will stay in. Uh, Maz I will start from the last question about the visa. Uh, you will start in Mazarik more than three minutes, uh, three months. Sorry, and in the uh, Czech law, in the consulate here in Algeria, they say when you are going to stay more than three months in Czech Republic, your passport will be in our consulate more than about two months for investigations and etc. Uh, things. So, you know, if you are going next February, you have to, uh, yeah, you have to start your visa procedures uh, three months uh, before. Okay. Okay. And uh, about documents, Masaryk University will send you all the documents you need. The invitation letter, the accommodation letter. Uh, please, the uh, okay, sorry, the, please, Tagarib, you can unmute your sound. sound. Doctor Tagarib. Okay, carry on, Mr. Bashir. Okay, so uh, I said the Mosaic University will send you all the documents you need to put in your file in which you need. I, see. I mean the invitation letter and uh, accommodation letter and the paper. Sorry? The invitation letter, the accommodation letter and uh, the documents which say that you will be get, you will get, uh, uh, you will get grant from uh, the Mosaic University. Your second question, you said how to manage your grant. Uh, you, you will get, you will, you will, uh, when you be there, you will uh, take very, very, very enough amount, which can provide you with everything. You will uh, get about, I think, 800 euros by, per month. You will need about 150 for accommodation and all the other. Uh, Money is for the everything, meals and transportation and your education and stuff. And as Aisha said, you are lucky because you will use the corona uh, or Czech corona because it's not that uh, uh, the cost living in Czech Republic or in Berlin is not that it's not that expensive. So you will you won't need a lot of money to manage your uh, your your affairs there. So don't think in this. Uh, 
don't take a lot of ink on this side. Okay? Thank you. Okay, I yeah. understand. Thank you, Michelle. You are most welcome. Aisha, carry on. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. So, yeah, as a, we have been talking before, when it comes to the, like, the visa procedure, the sooner the better. It uh, took 60 days in order to have your visa uh, like ready to, to travel with it and to use it. Uh, the most important thing is to contact the embassy as soon as possible in order to manage to get appointment. Uh, make sure that all your documents are ready with you. There is an interview uh, in visa. Yes, but it's so nice and gentle interview. <laughs> Not yeah, often <laughs> uh, needed, but like so friendly and very friendly way. Like, like what you are doing basically now. We are discussing uh, the, the our ambitions, what we want to do, uh, what why we want to apply for the Erasmus. So it's really Aisha, nice. Yes, please. Uh, the, the agents in the the Czech consular in Algeria here, they know Erasmus Plus. And they know that there are lots of universities in Algeria have uh, have a lot of relations with uh, Czech universities. So they have they know they already have an information and background mm -hmm. about you before you go there. So they won't ask you a lot of questions. They will ask you only for to give their the, the, the necessary documents only for that. And they are very very kind, very understandable and everything so don't uh, worry about this carry on Aisha I'm sorry for interrupting at all not at all the challenge that you may find is uh, to get an appointment the, the like uh, the treatment there really nice but for example when I applied it was outside of Erasmus like for at Charles University I had to wait five months only to get my appointment but lucky me, I was already having uh, uh, my, my visa, so I just uh, I I wanted to move my like to have in the like the residence card, you know. So it didn't affect me directly. I was able to carry my study, and everything was fine. But for example, for for someone who doesn't uh, who hasn't had any like uh, visa or uh, like residence card. It will be hard for him, especially for the very first time. Okay, you will, for example, you will start in, uh, let's say, just give an example, you will start in September. And you told them that I will start my study in September. But they told you, like, uh, there is no uh, appointment currently, you need to wait. So, in my case, like, I was supposed to start in September, but the appointment at the embassy, they gave me in November. I was lucky enough that I already have a visa, so I studied like uh, like September, October, then November. I went to to the embassy in order to have this uh, procedure, like to provide the, the paper and the, all those stuff. They know everything, they know the details, but it's just a story to to tell. Make sure to have your appointment as soon as possible. Explain them again and again and insist that you want to go in February 2000. Uh, 21, and uh, to make it easier for you, make it that clear, clear enough. Okay, inshallah. Sure. Uh, your second question? Um, my first question. Yeah. Uh, uh, your studies at uh, Masaryk University did uh, uh, have did, uh, added uh, some experience, uh, some uh, some educational uh, qualifications or uh, some. Um, uh, it uh, like like that, yes. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, because for example, I had also the uh, the chance to um, be um, like lectured by a South Korean a teacher. He studied. He did his uh, PhD in uh, uh, U.S. and you yes. know as a teacher, uh, Dr. Kim in the Faculty of Social Studies. And I was lucky enough that I, I studied uh, like his uh, course. It was um, uh, social media, the name of the course, because this is my major. Also, I had uh, the chance to have another course. It's called uh, audio and video to learn how to uh, 
uh, do the montage, the mixage, all those details. So it adds real value to my uh, like knowledge background. The challenge was that you need to improve, prove yourself, prove your capacities among all those students from around the world. And you are like we are Algerian. We need really to work to improve ourselves and our um, capacity and reflect the beautiful image of our mother university, Qazim al you know? So, for example, I was thinking about you, Fatima, like you are a PhD student, and I want to ask if you are doing your studies in French or in Arabic, in Uh In, in French, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, no, in my PhD, uh, in English. Okay, all the best. I wish you all Thank the best. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So, so uh, uh, I want to thank uh, all the guests with us uh, and uh, uh, Martina and uh, Tagrid. Welcome again to the to your second home here. Thank I'm serious, even in my home. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Never mind. So Fatima. thank you all for giving us the chance and the opportunity to get to know you and participate in this webinar. Aisha, I like thank your uh, English accent. Thank you, that's kind of you. Thank you so much. Fatima, of course, you can uh, stay in touch with me. You can write me if you need something. Uh, when to Brno, I can help you, okay? So, uh, Aladdin has my email, so you can uh, okay, please, uh, send her my email and we will stay in touch. It will be my pleasure to show on my city. Um, Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Okay, uh, Fatima, it's uh, it is your chance to learn more uh, about Mazar University and about studying there. Because you have Martina, yeah. you have Bashir, you have Aisha, so yeah. you are lucky today. <laughs> and I'm teacher of the Czech for academic for foreign uh, uh, stuff, so maybe you can be my student, like uh, Martina. Yeah. 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 I learned my check, my beautiful check, little check from the grocery store. They only, and Martina knows that. Everyone speak Czech there. So always I communicate with them with the Czech, beautiful language. It's beautiful, difficult language. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's true. yeah. Thank you, Martina. Yeah, but we have these courses like for free for the employees of Masek University, PhD students, or so they can do the, these courses for free, it's like benefit. So, of course, you can uh, uh, register and uh, study. Oh, Martina, can I ask you a question? Yes, I have. Me? Martina, can I ask yeah, you a question? Yeah. Uh, do you teach Arabic uh, in your university? No, no, I just teach Czech uh, for foreigners and Portuguese. Uh, I mean, Arabic is taught or not at all? Ah, yes, if you have the lessons. Yes, we have, yes. Oh, you have? Really? Ah, oh, okay. Yes, the, the language center, the Master University has oh. the Chinese, has Arabic as well. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, great, great. So, Mohammed, I are sorry, no one from Santiago de Compostela University, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, so but uh, I will go. I will go to Santiago in the spring. Yeah, but I. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, Maybe we yeah. can meet there. Yeah, yeah, I hope that this situation with coronavirus uh, like uh, disappear and that we can go because now, because now, yeah. we cannot travel like in the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the same for us. Possible. Yeah. Let me know, Mohammed. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, after the coffee eat aftermath. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you can meet uh, that in the university. Okay. So I was waiting for questions on the Facebook page, but unfortunately there are no questions. I don't know why. So, <laughs> is there anything to add uh, for Martina or Tagrid or from other uh, entrants or comments, questions? Okay. Are there any addition or something else? The first addition and the first and the, the most important is to invite people to come to Palestine, to visit us, to meet you, <laughs> to get to know all the experiences about the Algerian people. I know that the Algerian people like us and we do like them. Uh, also, with the Czech people, the Czech Republic, you're also welcome to, to visit and to study online, maybe virtually. 
Okay. Now it is because of the coronavirus. Okay. Thank you so much, Dari. Yeah. I highly appreciate your invitation, and it's my dream to visit Palestine. Yeah, you're welcome anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, Martina, you can tell us last word and to finish this meeting. And so, oh, okay, my last word it will be Italica. Italica. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm missing you, Aladdin. You, you were my bodyguard. You know. Yeah. Uh, you. It was hard with me sometimes because I insist I don't want to go by car from the university to the hotel. I yes. want to go by train, please. Okay. So, thank you. It's my duty. He had a hard time with me. No, it was very fine. We visited the sand dunes, and I had this um, memories in my heart. And please say hello to your family as well, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Martina. Okay, I will. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. So, so Tagrid, you can say oh. something else or an addition? Thank you. Thank you so much for everything and for the invitation, for the nice webinar, and for getting to know all of you. I hope we will be in touch, inshallah. Inshallah. We can we can exchange our emails, uh, Mr. Ala. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. Yeah. If you don't mind, if you wouldn't mind, of course. Yes, I and will. Do I that. don't know. If, I don't know if it is um recorded or not. If it is. Um, yes. This webinar is recorded. Yeah, where? it's recorded. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Welcome. So Aisha. Okay. Thank you, and send us the record link. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Bashir. <laughs> Thank you, Tari. Thank you, Ala. Decree, Martina. Decree. And uh, thank you to the. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to uh, Iman as well. And uh, good luck to Fatima and uh, Mohammed in the next day. Okay. And don't miss this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. So, Mohammed, okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for this uh, meeting. Uh, I hope. Uh, we will do uh, another one, uh, maybe next year, so I can tell about my experience. Uh, uh, okay, yes, <laughs> Yes, of course, why not? Okay, Fatima. So, thank you. Shukran. And how you say in Czech, thank you? Dikuyu. 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 And Dikuyu. Thank you much. Okay, thank you very much. For Bye. accepting the invitation to attend this Zoom. I was happy and pleasure to see you all. Martina, Tagrid, Aisha, Bashir, all. Me too. So, uh, thank you, Ana, also. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what else? Thank you, Ana. Thank you, Ana. The man of the event. Thank you, Ana. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ana. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you, Ana. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. All the best.